All right, so today we are in the shop and we are working on this 1971 Lancia Fulia. So a lot of people have been asking me about this car, wondering about it and oogling over it. So we're gonna get into a little technical in-depth. Um, I hope I'm saying it right. I'm not a foreign speaker of any type and I may pronounce Lancia or Fulvia wrong, but uh, just excuse my Italian and try to try to work with me. This is a really cool car. It is not the sport coupe. Uh, it is an X rally car. Uh, it's very rare. It's left hand drive. It is a 1971. It has four wheel disc brakes and a pretty powerful front wheel drive uh, five speed type of a configuration. Perfect for rallying back in the day. So let's get into that. The customer brought the car in because it wasn't running so good. It was completely fouling plugs. In fact, he just brought in the spark plugs. You can see there's three fouled ones and one clean one. I'm not sure what's up with that, but he brought in, he has to put in new spark plugs almost every time he drives the car and he's getting tired of it. So I suggested we put in an electronic ignition and we did that. We put in a, a one, two, three, which came from the Netherlands, I believe. It has um, 16 programmable electronic advanced curves as well as a, a vacuum advance, which the old point distributor, which is right here, more to, somewhat of a dinosaur, doesn't have. Um, it's pretty big, it's pretty clunky, and you gotta play with the points. And typically on old cars is what I find is the points burn or they're just a hassle. I've dealt with them a lot and I know how to work with them, but um, if there's an electronic ignition upgrade, I always try to encourage the customer to go that route. So what are we looking at here? This is a 1.3 liter. It's dual overhead cam and it's a V4. It doesn't look like a V4. It looks like an inline four. Let me move my timing, timing pick up there. You can see there's two cylinders. Cylinders one and two are on this bank and cylinders three and four are on that bank. And there's a header down there, a really cool, see that or not. It's, this car sounds like a sport bike. It sounds like a Hayabusa, but there's a 13 degree split between the upper bank and the, the lower bank. It shares a cylinder head, kind of like a VR6 Volkswagen, but this is much, much earlier than that. Uh, we've got dual Solex carburetors. I'm not positive on the size. Are they 35 millimeters? I'm not sure. I played with them a little bit to get them to idle a little better. Um, it has an electric fan, which for its time in 1971, that was pretty advanced. The whole engine sits in front of the axle center line. In other words, you can see the drive axles down there. The whole engine is tiny and it sits in front of the axle center line. So it pulls the car along. It is front wheel drive. Um, really neat car. Has the original, or I'm assuming a replica or a tribute license plate. Again, this is a Lancia Fulvia. Uh, has power disc brakes all the way around. I think I mentioned that, but just wanted to reiterate that for 1971, that's fantastic. Let's look at the interior of the car. So we've got well-appointed doors. You can see the stainless trim is in really good shape. Upper, lower, two-tone door panels, very nice. This is like a little mini Ferrari. Wood grain dash with our wood grain wheel and our horn. Let's see if we can turn the key on and make that work. Yeah, sounds like a big car. One thing that's interesting is the car does not have a radio antenna. It has this wire that comes out of the windshield and it goes on this stick-on antenna uh, that is just on the windshield. There's no aerial that you would pop up. Uh, no air conditioning, of course. Just basic, unlabeled Italian heater controls. Your fan uh, and, the, and hot, cold, and then how you direct the air. A clock, I guess, for checking your rally time and then the type of car that it is, a Fulvia. It's uh, electronic tack, which back in the day, that's some of them were mechanical. Uh, a cool steering wheel, as I talked about, a five speed transmission with a dog leg first, and a really simple interior. 
The interior is cloth, which is kind of odd. It feels like a sofa. Um, and I'm sure it gets dirty very easily. And we've got the driver's seat covered here so I don't get my greasy buns and stain the stain the, the seat. But really neat little car. What we're gonna do is we're gonna finish up on the tune-up on this thing and uh, take it for a drive. But let me just turn it on for you to get an idea of how this thing is. Give it a little gas. So the emergency brake light is the one that's flashing there. We've got our fuel with a light that comes on when you're low, temperature, and oil pressure. The oil pressure gauge is not reading. Oh, there it goes. It does have oil pressure. It's got these neat wheels, a little bit of oversized tires, Again, it's got dual carburetors. It just purrs like a kitten. It sounds like a motorcycle. That's pretty neat. All right, so I'm going to put these ignition wires on, and we'll go out and check the tune-up. We'll go take it for a drive. Hold tight. All right, so we're working on this Lancia Fulvia today, and I know I said I was going to take you for a test drive, but... Before I go on test drives, I always like to check out cars. So I popped it up on the rack. Let's do an undercarriage inspection before we go for a drive so that we're not caught off guard or uh, somehow stranded or don't know what to report to the customer. It's always good practice as a mechanic to do that. So, oh, so we're looking at the underside of our 1971 Lancia Fulvia. It has four wheel disc brakes. Of course, it's front wheel drive. We'll start here, we're looking in the back, it has just a normal beam axle with uh, leaf springs. Nothing really special. Uh, it does have some type of brake proportioning valve here. Um, that's, in other words, when the axle uh, or the front of the car nose dives and the rear lifts, that it can adjust the brake proportioning. It looks like it goes up through a series of rods. It goes forward to this valve right here. Uh, and that's your brake proportioning valve for 1971. That's, that's pretty cool. It's got single, no, dual piston single piston I think there's oh they're dual piston so it has two piston rear brake calipers so there's two pistons per wheel it has a nice big sway bar right up in there it goes across very tight it has a new exhaust system it has a pan hard rod to center the axle and then shocks that mount forward what kind of shocks are those I can't read them it looks like the uh, it has a uh, a big muffler here, I guess a pre-muffler, and then a, a resonator here right out by the tailpipe. Let's work our way forward. No Kelly converter, of course, and we have a two into one exhaust. So we have a really cool exhaust here. Let's see if we can get a good look at that right there. So it's a, it is a true exhaust header, like a long tube header that's a four into two into one. So it comes out of the cylinder head as four up there. It then merges into two, and then it goes into one way back. That's really good for torque and for high RPM. It really allows the engine to breathe. Um, so we have a front wheel drive subframe with tubular control arms. I don't know if you can see these. CV joints, four piston brake calipers. There's two pistons here and two on the outside. And I think a rack and pinion. No, it does not have rack and pinion. It has old fashioned steering box. Look at that, wow, that's cool but it's pretty compact. Uh, we have a five-speed transmission here, a transaxle, and the engine, of course, is in front of the axle center line, as I was trying to describe before. Aluminum oil pan, aluminum block. Yeah, look at that. Finned aluminum, lightweight. That's, that's the stuff there. That's pretty cool. Of course, it has a pretty big sway bar in the front. What kind of ball joints are those? Big old rubber bumper. I don't know what that is. Oh, that's for the spring. That, so it has a lateral spring. There's no springs you can see here. Uh, the spring goes laterally, uh, a transverse across the car, and that is the connection point. A big old rubber bumper. Interesting. And of course, the disc brakes here are solid, not vented, and they have no back splashing plate on there. Really neat. So, yeah, I wanted to give you guys a undercarriage tour of this 
Lancia Fulvia before we take it for a ride. This car is perfectly straight. I mean, you can always tell good body work when you're looking up from down below because nobody ever does body work that way. No rust, no door dings, not even a chip in the paint. It's beautiful, really nice. All right, enough yapping, enough looking at this uh, old Lancia with 14, I think these are 14 by sixes, beautiful Chromodora wheels. They are, uh, I don't know if they're aluminum or alloy or magnesium, they appear to be painted and they have the, um, I'm going to say this wrong, Vretstein tires. They're made in the Netherlands as I've, as I've been corrected. They are a little big for the car. Some people say that they're too big, but the owner likes them and they also have a rim protector here. Pretty neat. Okay, let's get this thing down and take it for a drive. All right, so we just finished up on the undercarriage inspection of our 71 Lancia Fulvia, and I think we're gonna take it for a drive. Such a good looking car, such a pretty color. It's just gorgeous. Let's stand back here and just take a take it all in. Isn't that neat? All right, it's enough looking. Let's do some driving. So I pulled it out here in front of the shop. We're gonna take it for a drive. It's very easy to get into. Doors feel very solid. There are no seat belts. I didn't realize there was no seat belts. I guess there's no seat belts. You take your life in your hand when you when you drive an Italian car. So we're gonna turn the key, see how easy it starts up. Just like that. And again, we've got a dog leg first, so it's down. Take our brake off. And let's see the controls here. We've got our turn signals, left, right, and our headlights. I think we Yeah, okay. So to turn the headlights on, you gotta flip this switch and then pull this down. We don't need our headlights right now. And the heater controls, we don't need those. Okay, we're in gear. Let's make sure there's no cars behind us. Look in our rearview mirror and we can go. We've got a little sports car. Now I can tell by the gearing, she really wants to go. I feel very upright and I feel odd not wearing a seatbelt. Okay, turn signals on. Make sure we don't get smashed. All right, oncoming car. Let's take it for a drive here. Turn signals cancel. It's very low geared. Let it build a little temperature up here. Wow, it really wants to go. No wonder it's a five speed. Take some throttle, there we go. Wow, she zips. That's fun. That's fourth gear. This thing is a hoot. That's, it really revs up. It's like a sport bike. That's really neat. Okay, we'll turn around here. Drop her down to the third. Wait for all these trucks to pass. It's not often I get to work on a, enjoy an Italian car first thing in the morning but I have to say I'm enjoying it now this thing really zips along it's it lives up to its name okay traffic's turn out gotta get my big boots in the in the footwell area my boots pretty wide so shifting from the brake to the gas I can kind of find it and make sure we're not gonna get smashed Turn signals are off. Yeah, the gear ratios this thing are very sporty. Tell. Listen to that baby go. Wow, that's neat. What a fun car. It's not super fast, but it is really rev happy. Like if I floor it right now at let's say 2200 RPM, it doesn't have much, but it starts to pull like a freight train. Look at that. By 4,000 RPM, it's really on its way to making some power. I can just tell. Brakes are sharp. Click her down into first. Hopefully first is synchronized. Oh, it is, but I wanted to make sure of that. Didn't want to just jam it in gear. What a fun car. I didn't even pay attention to see if the speedometer was, was working. Might have to guys let me through. 
yeah, speedometer is working. What a neat car. I mean, I could drive this thing all day. Did I mention that I've got one of the greatest jobs in the world? <laughs> oh, I love my job. Let's get out and take a look at it once again. She's idling about 1,000 RPM, super smooth, super nice. Look at that thing. Wouldn't you love to be driving that thing today? Man, I wish I could. I gotta move on to the next car, but I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope you check out my other videos of neat cars that I happen upon. This one's pretty special. All right, thanks a lot for watching.